Like Highlanders everywhere from Ethiopia to Kabul, the Welsh have always looked down with envy and contempt on the soft living in the plains below. Wales is basically three great blocks of mountains, the largest and grandest in the north, the Snowdon Range and Cader Idris. Snowdon itself rises more than three and a half thousand feet and its associated ranges and outliers occupy nearly the whole of North Wales. In the south, the Brecon Beacons, where a whole English army once came to ruin in the bogs on the wild moors, and below the beacons lie the long valleys of the coal miners. In the centre, Old Plinlimon. And everywhere, always, the mountain sheep are sweeter, but the valley sheep are fatter. We therefore deemed it meter to carry off the latter. I lived in that cottage by Plinlimon in mid Wales, off and on for years. Winter and summer I used to come back to it from assignments in Agadir and Algeria, Delhi and Hong Kong, each time with a deeper affection for the Welsh way of life. Man as part of nature, democracy with dignity, poor and proud like Spain, like Spain in the rain. It's a foreign country, this land of their fathers. You wouldn't be at all surprised to come across a wizard or a dragon or two up here. And up here, a tough, determined handful of men could disrupt the lines of communication of an army, and often did. The Welsh word for the nation is Cymru, our own people. For us, they're the Welsh, the foreigners. The broad brown mountain of Plinlimon Vaur, where the great rivers rise. It's the ancient heart of Wales. Bones dug up on Plinlimon slopes prove that men have been living here continuously for four or five thousand years. Too much water and not enough soil is the complaint of Wales. There's enough water up here for the whole British island. Plinlimon is like an enormous sponge. Here is the source of the River Severn. The Wye rises not far away and three other Welsh rivers begin here. The magic of water is the fabric of Welsh folk tales a magic of enchanted lakes and drowned bells. Under this lake, a real village lies drowned. But Nantamoch gave up the struggle half a century before the water covered it, when all the families but one packed up one morning and left for Australia, where shepherds need not go hungry. Here at Kimmerai in Cardiganshire is the Aboriginal Welsh way of life. Free and independent on the mountainside as a dog and stick farmer. It's a life which breeds a strong local patriotism. I used to know an old man who sat by the fire in a pub near here, giving out words of local wisdom. He would spit in the fire to command attention and then slowly pronounce, here in mid Wales we regard North Walians as prigs and South Walians as cads. There was always a murmur of agreement. <laughs> 